This is the Yachting Festival in Cannes, a boat show where many new boats are presented every year. Even those who are not boating enthusiasts know the Azimut shipyard and its yachts. This is the new 60 flying bridge, and you can see immediately that it is an azimut, but you can also sense that it belongs to a new generation. The designer of the external lines has kept the main characteristics of the shipyard, but it has brought it up to date. What I mean is that in azimut's history, there have been some aesthetic turns, and this 60-foot flying bridge seems to start a new trend. The windows are essential in underlying the change. The bow as well, with a vertical stroke, the lightened up deck, the shape of the forward deck house, they all express the evolution of taste. I think it would also be a wonderful coup if we can cut the fly. And then there are advantages. Yes, more space inside without reducing the outdoor areas. Even here at the bow, there is a lounge composed of a table and two large sofas, able to be converted into a large sunbathing area. Climb up to the upper deck. In the command post, there are two pilot seats, and next to them, the sun deck. Then there is the dinette, a bar, and a living area aft. In the cockpit, the curtain is used to give a little privacy. The sailor's cabin has two berths, or a single bed and ample storage. The swim platform is able to accommodate a tender of 3.25 metres. Inside, we can admire the express capabilities of Achille Salvini, an internationally renowned architect, who a French magazine has included among the 100 best designers in the world. At first glance, the decor leaves you a little surprised because it is more metropolitan than nautical, but every area has its own style of furniture, and perhaps this is the most contemporary we have seen in the latest boats and it doesn't matter if there is nothing nautical about it. But then, that's not exactly true, and shortly we will examine it further. Meanwhile, we observe the ceilings. They don't look like those you would expect on a boat. They are quite different. The entrance area of the living room may resemble others as far as its arrangement, but the furniture is original, oak treated with soft tones, leather, linen, and Egyptian cottons and then the wooden floor. Technical carpet, water resistant. In the proposal that will furnish the first 10 units of this Azimut 60 flying bridge, the main essence is the desert-colored brushed oak combined with the mahogany that in some places is glossy. Alternatively, you can have ebony, mahogany, walnut, rosewood, always with inserts in treated brass, bronze, and polished steel. The view towards the outside is sensational, both in the living room area and in the dining area, where an up and down table becomes a coffee table. There are three cabins, each with their own bathroom. In the owner's cabin, which is located at midships, there is a wardrobe and bathroom aft, acting as a sound and heat barrier between the cabin and the engine room. The TV can be retracted into the dresser, which is flanked by two seats. The VIP cabin offers other original furnishings and two wardrobes. Finally, the third cabin, with two twin beds sharing a single green headboard. How many colours have been used on this yacht? The furniture is very particular. You would never even imagine to find this style aboard a yacht, 
and yet it's all very nice. It begins the plane at just 12 knots. It is nice to steer from the fly on days like this, even if there is a bit of wind. We talked for a long time about the aesthetics, the beauty of this hull and its lines. But if you'll allow me, there is something even more important. And that is the way it's built, by vacuum-infused resin and then, obviously, with vinyl ester resin. And the hard top is made from carbon, to be lighter, therefore, avoiding to raise the centre of gravity. We have arrived at 20 knots, with an engine speed of 1,820 RPM per engine. The total consumption is 200 litres per hour. A 60-footer like this can safely be piloted by the owner, perhaps assisted by family or friends. And Azimut has made sure to simplify all the necessary operations, both in manoeuvring and navigation. We are in fact using a boat with direct shaft lines, and yet we have the joystick for manoeuvring, which interfaces not only with the propulsion of the boat, but also with the bow thruster. By the way, on this model we have two Volvo Penta D13 engines of 900 horsepower each. Alternatively, you can choose man engines of 800 horsepower. Some data. At cruising speed, 25 knots, 2,000 RPM and 250 litres per hour consumption, we are at 10 litres per mile. As I brought the boat up to speed, I did not have to correct its ascent. There is an automatic system, another helpful feature for the pilot. It was developed by Azimut in collaboration with the company that builds it, and it has been calibrated so that as the speed changes, it intervenes to balance the longitudinal trim, so that the angle of incidence is always optimal, between three and four degrees. And it's working perfectly. Pensate che lo stesso sistema è in grado di intervenire anche sulla sbandata laterale, just think that the same system is able to intervene even banking in a turn, when, for example, the wind and sea are transverse. The boat tends to undergo the action of natural forces and then it swerves, it leans on the side. But this system corrects the setup and brings us back level. Anche per quanto riguarda la virata, ci sono delle novità. Also, with regard to the turn, there is some news. This boat is equipped with an electronic rudder. What does that mean? That the response to the action on the rudder is different depending on the speed. When manoeuvring, we have a very fast, rapid action. At high speed, the response is always ready, but more gradual. I gave a little more gas. We are at 26 knots, 2,100 RPM. Even this could be considered a cruising speed. And the maximum? Consider that at this moment the boat is at full load. It is loaded as if we were to leave for a cruise, as well as being outfitted with equipment that goes beyond the standard. For example, the hardtop. Here, the engines have reached the speed of 2,350 RPM, and we are at 30 knots of speed, 30.5 knots.
The Azimut 60 Flying Bridge is a boat that charms for its exterior style, teases for this new interior decor, but above all, pay attention to how it's built and how easy it is to pilot.